Large passenger ships known as cruise ships are employed mostly for leisure travel. Cruise ships, as opposed to ocean liners, which are employed for transportation, often set sail on round-trip cruises to numerous ports of call, where guests may take part in shore excursions or tours. On cruises to nowhere or nowhere voyages, cruise ships travel round-trip for two to three nights without stopping at any ports. In comparison to ocean liners, modern cruise ships typically have less hull strength, speed, and agility. Recent vessels, nevertheless, have been referred to as balcony-laden floating condominiums because of the facilities they have incorporated to cater to aquatic tourists. There were 314 cruise ships in operation as of December 2018 with a total passenger capacity of 537,000. With an estimated market of $29.4 billion and more than 19 million passengers transported globally each year as of 2011, cruising has grown to be a significant component of the tourism industry. Every year since 2001, nine or more freshly built ships serving a North American clientele have been added to the sector, along with others serving a European clientele. However, the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 caused the entire industry to all but collapse. The Wonder of the Seas from Royal Caribbean is the largest passenger ship in the world as of 2022. With the noteworthy exception of transatlantic trips run by the British shipping company Cunard Line, which caters to a niche market of people who value the many days at sea, ocean liner services aimed at passengers ceased in 1986. Cunard Line invented the luxury cruise transatlantic service on board the ocean liner Queen Elizabeth II in an effort to shift the market's focus from passenger transport to cruising with entertainment value. Onboard cabaret performances by international celebrities were arranged, and the crossing was promoted as a holiday unto itself. Modern cruise ships constructed in the late 1980s and later demonstrated features of size and strength traditionally reserved for ocean liners. Some have made scheduled transatlantic voyages on a regular basis, such the Sovereign Class, which broke the size record held for decades by Norway. They were the first class of cruise ships to include a multi-story atrium with glass elevators, and they were also the first megaships to be built for the mass cruising market. Additionally, they had a single deck that was exclusively made up of cabins with private balconies rather than ocean view cabins. Soon after, other cruise companies debuted vessels with comparable features, such as the Fantasy Class and the Vista Class, a Panamax-style vessel with two-thirds of its ocean view cabins equipped with balconies. Recent cruise ships have been designed to optimize such amenities and have been dubbed balcony-laden floating condominiums since they were particularly profitable for cruise lines and something that was missing in older ocean liners. Shuffleboard, deck chairs, drinks with umbrellas, and not much else were available on cruises from 1975 to 1980. They started to offer more conveniences around 1980. City-sized ships feature hundreds of amenities as of 2010. Every year since 2001, there have been nine or more brand new cruise ships added, including the 11 ships of the aforementioned Vista class, and all of them are 100,000 GT or larger. The Queen Mary II of Cunard Line, which was finished in 2004, is the only comparable ocean liner to have been constructed recently. Queen Mary II is the lone liner operating on transatlantic routes since her running mate Queen Elizabeth II retired in November 2008, albeit she also sees a lot of service on cruise itineraries. Before 2006, Royal Caribbean International's Freedom Class ships overtook Queen Mary II as the largest passenger ship. The Oasis-class ships owned by RCI, which went into service in 2009 and 2010, eventually overtook the Freedom Class ships. Oasis-class ships are distinguished by their split open atrium design, which was made possible by the hull's remarkable width. This design features verandas on every deck as well as six deck high outdoor spaces called Central Park and Boardwalk that run down the center of the ship. Cruise lines are businesses that market cruises to the general public and operate cruise ships. The dual nature of cruise lines, partly in the transportation industry and partly in the leisure entertainment sector, translates into the ships themselves, which have a crew led by the ship's captain and a hospitality staff led by someone with hotel manager-like qualifications. Some cruise lines, like Cunard, are the direct offspring of the classic passenger shipping lines, while others were established in the 1960s particularly for cruising. 
Many cruise lines were acquired by much bigger holding businesses in the 1990s as a result of a wave of failures and mergers, and many still operate as brands or subsidiaries of the holding firm. Brands are still in existence in part due to the expectation of repeat business and the ability to provide varying degrees of quality and service. For instance, Carnival Corporation and PLC owns Carnival Cruise Line, whose ships had a reputation as party ships for younger travelers in the past, but which have since grown to be large, modern, and still profitable, as well as Holland America Line and Cunard Line, whose ships promote an image of classic elegance. The largest class of cruise ships have increased in length by a third, 268 to 360 m, 879 feet 3 inches to 1,181 feet 1 inch, and breadth by almost twice that amount, 32.2 to 60.5 m, 105 feet 8 inches to 198 feet 6 inches, and passenger capacity by a factor of 2. 2,744 to 5,400, and in volume by a factor of 3, 73,000 to 225,000 GT. The megaships also changed from having just one deck with verandas to having verandas on every deck. The cruise ship industry has a turbulent past. The ships are expensive upfront expenditures with substantial ongoing expenses. A company's finances may be in danger if bookings consistently drop. In order to stay up with changing travel patterns, cruise lines have sold, remodeled, or renamed their ships. Cruise lines practically always keep their ships in operation. There may be thousands of unhappy consumers as a result of unannounced maintenance. The cost of the cruise usually includes meals on board the ships. A current trend is to let passengers eat whenever they wish. Traditionally, the ship's restaurants organized two dinner services per day, early dining and late dining, and passengers are assigned a specific meal hour for the duration of the trip. In addition to the dining room, contemporary cruise ships frequently have one or more informal buffet-style restaurants. These establishments may be open around the clock and have daily changing menus that offer anything from breakfast to late-night snacks. In recent years, cruise lines have begun to feature a variety of restaurants with ethnic themes on each ship. The majority of cruise lines do not include alcoholic beverages in their prices, thus passengers are required to pay for drinks as they are consumed. Ships also have a large number of bars and nightclubs for passenger amusement. The majority of cruise lines also forbid guests from bringing and consuming their own drinks while on board, including alcohol. Duty-free alcohol is sealed and given back to travelers after they disembark. Despite being tall, modern cruise ships are sturdy because of their low center of mass. Large open areas, the extensive use of aluminum, high-strength steel, and other lightweight materials in the upper parts, and the placement of the heaviest parts at the bottom of the hull's hull, such as the engines, propellers, fuel tanks, and so forth, all contribute to this. Due to good weight distribution, modern cruise ships are not top-heavy even though they may appear towering. Large cruise ships also frequently have a broad beam, which greatly improves their early stability by raising the metacentric height. Although stabilizers are typically employed on passenger ships to lessen rolling in bad weather, they are primarily utilized for the comfort of the crew and passengers and do not add to the overall structural stability of the vessel. Even with the stabilizer fins retracted, the ships must still meet all stability criteria. The Washington Post reports that a recent research by economic consultant G.P. Wild, commissioned by the Trade Association for the Cruise Industry and published in March 2019, asserted that cruises are becoming steadily safer. According to the study, the number of overall operational mishaps decreased by 37% and the frequency of man overboard accidents decreased by 35% between 2009 and 2018, despite a capacity increase of 55%. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more facts videos.